Hello, Professor. This is Erica Chavaria, Sex Education, April 13, 2018. Um, this is the uh, lesson plan assignment. And I'm going to be talking about healthy relationships and sexual assaults and their relationship to each other. Next slide. First slide I'll present to the classroom. I will be using a PowerPoint and some handouts for this, for this lesson. Um, but we'll start off with this slide where it says, we are all here to connect. Shame and judgment blocks connections from ourselves and others. It's a journey, no one is ahead of you or behind you. You are not more advanced or less enlightened. You are exactly where you need to be. It's not a contest, it's life. We are all teachers and we are all students. Uh, and so what I wanna to touch on is in this relationship between healthy relationships and sexual assaults, you know, there is a myth that um, it can't happen in married couples. Um, that is a myth. We, we know that sexual assaults can occur in marriages, can assault in same-sex relationships that are not married, and, and, and boyfriend and girlfriends that are not related, uh, that are not married, excuse me. Um, what, what needs to happen is where are we giving up control in those instances? because sexual assaults are about control and power. Next slide. So we're gonna to touch on three different terms here. So creating and living a life you love starts with healthy boundaries and behaviors. And, and that's what uh, the students should be looking at here is what are the healthy boundaries and what are the healthy behaviors that we're looking at. So we'll start off with awareness here. Each of you is responsible for your own needs and happiness and you aren't responsible for anyone else's. Um, so you bring a happy person and a happy person, they they don't, uh, I can't make somebody else happy, you have to be happy. Um, so there's uh, some questions here for the, for the class is, who am I? What do I want and need for a happy life? Now answer those on the piece of paper that you'll have, answer those questions to yourself there. And we'll move on to the next one when you're done. Authenticity. Alan Cohen said the real power is not power over others. It is power to be yourself. And here is, what is your authentic self? Who am I? Who do I want to be? And am I behaving and communicating it daily? Answer those questions. We move on to actions. What are our actions? Michael Orlowski said, our lifestyles are made up of habits, comfort, fear, and reinforcements. What actions and choices am I making daily to create and live a happy life? We'll move on to the next slide. Once they've answered these questions, I will hand them this needs inventory list. And we'll go through this needs inventory list that will give them further words and further ideas to be able to answer the previous questions. Did they miss something? Does these, these terminologies stir another thought? Does it provoke further thought into what they answered before? And we go through this, uh, acceptance, affection, integrity, humor, communion, hope, mourning, choice. You know, so we're, we're, we start looking. Um, we move on to the next slide. So actions, as we are, we're talking about actions, actions are about choices. The choice to react to others or to be your authentic self. And you know, what we're, we're looking at is here is we wanna be able to educate everybody. Because if we can educate everybody in this, in, the, in what healthy relationships can and are and could be, and how they can relate to sexual assaults, and we have everybody on the same playing field in the same understanding, we're able to hopefully eliminate and minimize the victims of sexual assault. Catherine Woodward said, uh, Edward, Catherine Woodward Thomas said, the extent to which you still feel victimized by what's happened to you in the past is the extent to which you are likely to repeat that same trauma again. We only resent people to the extent that we have given our power away to them. So don't react take a deep breath and ask yourself this, am I giving this person power? How does this choice I'm going to make serve me? How does this choice align with who I am and what I need? And will this decision help me stay connected 
with myself and others. We are empowering people to not become victims, is what this is. We're empowering them to not become a victim and be able to speak up before they can become a victim. Next slide, please. So we want, we want to look at nonviolent communication. Again, we're talking to everybody across the board. So when we're talking about nonviolent communication, you know, this is a uh, uh, something we're going to do in the class. If and excuse my PowerPoint, um, we're looking at. We want them to take a deep breath, which I'm going to need to do right now because my PowerPoint's acting up. Observation: Take a few deep breaths, hit the play button, and, and so that it stops or something. Excuse me. No, 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 don't stop. Okay, so observation. Take a few deep breaths to help calm your emotions and speak clearly. So there's a few steps that we're gonna go through here. Your feelings, your needs, your requests. When you become experienced with the process, combine all four steps into a sentence. When I observe, see or hear what you observe, I feel, what emotion do I feel? Because I need something of value. What is that that you need? Would you be willing? And, and so this is a way to communicate non-violently to somebody before something ever happens. And we're trying to build up before things happen, tools for people to be able to communicate what is occurring beforehand. How do we communicate before we arrive to an issue, before it gets there? Again, it's about power and control. So we don't want to give them power and control. We want to be able to communicate our feelings without giving people power and control. So now we're going to transition here to more of what we're talking about with the sexual assault. One out of every six American women has been the victim of an attempted or completed rape in her lifetime. One out of every six. Next slide. 27% of sexual assaults are committed by a current or former spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend. And that's through the US Department of Justice, those statistics. That 27% of sexual assaults are committed by a current or former spouse, boyfriend, or girlfriend. Power and control is what we're looking at here. Next, please. Seven out of 10 rapes are committed by someone known to the victim. 28 per, out of, seven out of 10, 28% are committed by a stranger. 45 are committed by an acquaintance. 25 are committed by a current or former spouse, boyfriend or girlfriend. Six are committed by more than one person or the, or the victim cannot remember. And 1% are committed by a non-spouse relative. So, you know, we're talking about 45% committed by an acquaintance. Normally there is some grooming going on. There is something happening behind the scenes. This doesn't just occur. There is some form of physical violence. There is some grooming that leads to, to this. The next slide, please. So how do you know if you've been experiencing abuse? Next slide. We wanna look. Does my partner make me have sex when I don't want to? Does my partner mess with my birth control or try to get me pregnant when I don't want to be? Does my partner refuse to use condoms when I ask? Am I afraid to ask my partner to use condoms? Does my partner tell me who I can talk to or where I can go? Am I afraid? Am I afraid my partner would hurt me if I told him I had a sexually transmitted infection that he needed to be treated too? Has my partner made me afraid or physically hurt me? So I want the class individually, whatever you want, you, you look at these questions and you answer these questions to yourself. If these are things that you are experiencing or know somebody that's experiencing this, then you may be in a sexually abusive or a physically abusive relationship uh, and that's what leads to this. And so that's why we want to tie the communication in a healthy relationship with so what sexual assault is. And so if you are, next slide please. There's a national sex assault hotline where you can reach out to get help. 
Um, if you are being a victim, you could also contact your local police department. But if you need further resources, there's a National Sexual Assault Hotline, or you can look up your, your local community crisis center. Thank you for spending some time with me this evening, and that's my presentation.